Yodi doty. I want to do a little talking about the uh, the Glock pistols. Um, this is just kind of off the cuff, which most of my stuff normally is. But I have my three Glocks out here. I just picked up a Glock 17 a couple hours ago. And you know, you always hear the talk about, uh, you know, the parts are interchangeable on Glocks. Which, on the same size frame stuff, they are. You know, a lot of the internals and stuff, you can swap out. What I'm getting at is, is the barrels. I had it in my head that you could take a Gen 3 Glock 17 barrel and put it in a Gen 3 Glock 19 slide. And you could put it together and the barrel would just stick out the end a little bit. Makes perfect sense to me. You know, the only difference between the two is the barrel length. But I found out that that is not the case. Here we have the two the two barrels. Mm, let's see this thing should say there you go. Nine by nineteen. Nine by nineteen. Okay. This here is the Glock nineteen barrel. This here is the Glock seventeen barrel. Seventeen obviously is longer. I put the seventeen barrel in the nineteen slide. Put the 19 spring in, tried to put the slide on the 19 frame, and it wouldn't go. I was like, what in the world? So I got to looking at these two. And uh, I'm just going to show you something here. I'm going to take these two, put this one in the front. I'm going to come back here on a nice wooden solid surface off of that blue sponge tape stuff and I want to show you a difference and I could swear that I had seen videos done where people had done this but obviously not okay these are lined up perfectly here at the butt end okay stood them up right there lined up now look at how this stuff lines up You see how the 19, the shorter barrel, the lugging and stuff is further back than on the 17. And see, I just assumed that this stuff here would be identical. You know, the frames are the same. I mean, really, I thought the only difference was just the slide length. Now, I can understand it that this is like a Gen 4 to a Gen 3, but it's not. These are both Gen 3s. And you can see how much different that offset is. So hence, the 17 barrel would not go in the 19 frame. So just a little gee whiz information. Um, like I said, I picked up this uh, Glock 17 here just a couple hours ago. Haven't fired it or anything. But, uh, you know, I wanted to discuss something else too. And this has to do with calibers I've really been thinking pretty hard pretty hard about potentially taking my carry helps to get it on the slide on that side dummy taking my carry semi-autos and pretty much going straight 9 millimeter. I went in I went into the into Wally World China Mart, whatever you want to call it this morning see if they had any ammo and I went back there and they had some Winchester white box in 45 and some Winchester white box in 40. I bought some Winchester white box in 9 millimeter last weekend because that's what they had last weekend but after purchasing this ammo, I mean that Winchester white box, 100 round pack, a 45 was $40. Okay. The 100 round pack of 40 Smith and Wesson was 
$35. And the 100 pack of 9mm last weekend was $22. 9mm is essentially, essentially about half expensive to shoot as 45 is. And I know that there are the, <clears throat> the, the stories, the beliefs, and uh, not that I don't believe this, but you know, that the 45 is the best man stopper out there. I'm going to try and find this article that I've seen on YouTube and link it at the bottom of this video if I can find it. And uh, this was a some research that an individual did and actually went around and and talked with people who actually had been shot. The ones that were still alive, obviously. And uh, got some statistics about quote-unquote stopping power. And they went all the way from 22 long rifle all the way up to, uh, I believe, 44 Magnum. And how many shots it took, you know, to stop, you know, the attack to, you know, take the suspect or the person... Uh, out of commission or kill them or whatever the end result was and I'll tell you I think you'd be surprised at what the results are um, you know with proper shot placement as we know you know a 22 long rifle will take you out um, so it, it, it gets down to basic economics I mean and, and that's kind of what came up whenever I picked up another Glock they're affordable. If you know, shiz hits the hits the fan, and you have something on one that breaks, other than being able to swap the barrel, but whatever it is, a spring or something, you can you can interchange. You know, take parts from one, put it in another, make it work. The magazines, as we know, were you know interchangeable from frame size to frame size. Uh, Actually, the handgun that I, I, I traded, I traded my MMP9 Compact for this 17. I had no problems with the 9 Compact. I didn't have, I'd never had a single issue with it. I probably only put around 150 rounds through it. Never had a single malfunction. But just like for the same reason I got rid of my Glock 27, which I got rid of that gun, I traded it for the MMP9. I didn't like the 27, and I still don't like the way the subcompact Glocks feel in my hand. I'm huge about the way they feel. The MMP9 Compact felt better in my hand, but the thing I don't like about it, and this is not a ding on Smith & Wesson by no means, but the gun feels very top-heavy to me because of that really good, high-quality stainless steel slide, which you don't get on these Glocks. But that makes the gun heavier, and it makes it top-heavy. And I hated that top-heavy feel. I know, I'm a freaking moron goober. But I just didn't like the feel of it. And I think the vast majority of us that shoot, you want your gun to feel good in your hand. So I just made a choice to uh, try and trade that off, and it actually happened. I dealt with a, another uh, small gun shop in my town that he's only been open for about three months and uh, he treated me right so uh, but I, I just kind of want to hear you guys chime in on what you think about the caliber and I mean be realistic don't sit here and go on and on about you know 45 is the best in the world this and that because of what you've I don't know been been listening to your entire life because everybody likes the 1911 and but I really don't know that there is a huge difference, huge, um, there is a difference, granted, but a huge difference between shooting a 9 and a 45 when it comes to personal defense. I think the vast majority of people, they get hit with a bullet, they are going to stop, whether it's a 22 or a 45. Now you get that 350 pound goon that's, you know, on dope, high on whatever, well, all bets are off. I mean, but there's no guarantees that a 44 Magnum is going to stop that person. And, and one thing that I've uh, been a, something I always keep in my mind is if anything, God forbid, was ever to happen and I had time 
and I couldn't get a threat stopped, I would try and shoot that individual in a hip. Essentially take their legs out from under. You break a bone in the hip, they're going to go down. If they can get a hold of you, they still may be able to fight, but they are going to go down. You know. But uh, economics, man. 9mm, half the cost to shoot as a 45. I still have my 1911. I will not be getting rid of my 1911. I will still have 45s. But I'm talking about my primary, uh, you know, what I would use for defense. Whether it be a truck gun on my person, you know, 1911 can sit by my bed right now. This is my bedside gun. This is the Glock 22, 40 Smith & Wesson with the light. You know, this is what sits by my bed. 40 Smith & Wesson has an outstanding caliber, you know, as well. But it's up there about as expensive as 9mm. I'm sorry, it's 45 ACP. So, I'm really wrestling with this. You know, when it gets right down to it, it probably don't matter because I'll change my mind next month anyway. But, uh, boy, whenever... And, and, and ammo is the one thing, the one thing I absolutely hate to spend money on. You know? you I spent $125 on ammo this morning at Walmart, and essentially I could blow that whole $125 in a few hours out at the shooting range. You shoot it, it's gone. That money is just gone. Literally up in smoke. You know, you buy a firearm and you can put 2,000 rounds through it and you still got the gun. But you got to have the ammo to do that. I just hate buying freaking ammo. I freaking hate it. But we all have to do it. But uh, I just kind of mainly wanted to show because that kind of surprised me that I couldn't take that barrel out of that 17 and put it in that 19 when they're both the same generation and everything. Thought that was just kind of kind of interesting, but uh, let me know what you guys think. I know there's been some other pretty big YouTubers that have, you know, done this type of thing, have gone uh, caliber specific, because you're not trying to have 2,000 rounds of nine millimeter, 2,000 rounds of 40, 2,000 rounds of 45, 2,000 rounds of 380, you know, the whole nine yards. You know, you can concentrate pretty much pretty much about 90% on one caliber and just concentrate your funds on that particular caliber and you don't have to spread it across three or four different ones. You know, I think that's the huge, huge plus right there. But, uh, you know, I just picked up that little 380, a little pocket gun. I don't plan on firing that thing a whole bunch. I mean, that ammo is just as expensive as 45. I got that gun for the size, you know, for a pocket gun. That's why I have it. And uh, I took that to the range uh, this past weekend, put 75 rounds through it, and that little bodyguard 380 ran like a top. Zero malfunctions. I really, really like it. But uh, let me know what you think. Um, these are the only three Glocks I have. I tell you, I was looking in my safe, and you know, a lot of people think that because I get guns and stuff, you know, fairly often that I must have this huge collection. I'm not talking about you YouTubers. I'm talking about friends of mine. Um, I mean, I'm like a lot of you guys, you know. I'll sell them. I'll trade them. Um, that's what I did today. I, I did a trade, you know. That m and 9 was one because of how it felt in my hand when I went to the range. I really had no desire to take it with me. That's just the bottom line. Just the bottom line. And the way the Glocks feel in my hand, <clears throat> I'm not a full-blown Glock fanboy. I do like Glocks, but I like others as well. But for the for the money and the reliability and the weight and just the way the gun feels to me and the interchangeability, um, I think that they're they're real tough to beat for their price point. Uh, one day I, I will. I mean, I'd love to have you know like a Sig 229 or a 226 or Something like that, but, uh, you know, as we know, we're talking 800 plus for the most part on one of them versus, you know, 499 for one of these. So, anyway, I've done enough rambling. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, give, me some, give me some feedback. Keep it civil. Keep it nice. And uh, 
We'll talk to y'all later. We'll see ya.